Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar, Supporting Nursing Homes in the COVID-19 Crisis. We'll begin with remarks from the panel and conclude with attendee questions. To ask a question, please click on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Type in your question and you will join the queue. Additionally, a recording of this webinar will be made afterwards available to all attendees. Now I'd like to introduce Dr. Terry Fulmer, President of the John A. Hartford Foundation. Dr. Fulmer is a nationally and internationally recognized as a leader in expert in geriatric care. She's an elected member of the National Academy of Medicine and she's chief strategist for the John A. Hartford Foundation, a private national philanthropy established in 1929 with funds from the family owners of the AMP grocery stores. The John A. Hartford Foundation is dedicated to improving the care of older adults and works in three priority areas creating age-friendly health systems, supporting family caregivers of older adults, and improving serious illness and end-of-life care. And now, Dr. Fulmer. Terry, you're on mute, I think. Thank you all for joining us to learn about this new opportunity to support our nursing homes during the COVID-19 crisis and beyond. First, let me acknowledge the devastating toll this pandemic is taking on all of us. We hold in our thoughts those who have experienced illness and loss, and we thank all of our essential workers, and especially our healthcare providers, like those in nursing homes, who are sacrificing so much for all of us. We we're having this discussion today because honestly, our healthcare system and our society has failed our nursing homes and all those who live and work there. It's heart-wrenching to see the devastating toll that COVID-19 is having on the residents and staff. And we must act now to offer more support to these essential sites of care. I know all of you as staff and leaders from facilities or representatives of stakeholder organizations from the sector would agree that our nursing homes are doing valiant work every day to protect residents and staff. We know you're innovating and finding solutions and you're seeking out evidence-based guidance and access to resources to manage your daily needs in the midst of a lot of confusion. That's why our in we've got input from many of you to create a new initiative that will launch next Monday, May 4th, which we hope you will join and spread the word about. Guided by national leaders from across the country, we will launch COVID-19 Rapid Response Network for Nursing Homes, which will provide daily support for our long-term care community. The topics and content informed by all of you will cover the pressing challenges that facilities are facing right now, challenges with personal protective equipment, a lack of testing capacity, challenges in coordinated coordination and transfer with hospitals, maintaining communications with family members and the public, and the emotional, emotional toll that the pandemic is taking on all nursing home personnel. We're here for you. By collectively sharing and learning with each other, we can make a difference right now and change the trajectory of this pandemic for nursing homes and the older adults and people with disabilities who live and receive their care there. The John A. Hartford Foundation is proud to support this initiative with an emergency grant. This is an emergency. We've partnered with close colleagues in quality improvement and rapid learning and the amazing Institute for Healthcare Improvement, or IHI. We'll hear more in a moment about this new opportunity from IHI colleagues, followed by an update and comments from a true champion in this work, Dr. Sherry Ling from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. We know that we should have paid more attention when we first heard about Kirkland. We should have paid attention when Europe was facing similar crises in their care homes. We also know that unfortunately, this crisis has everything to do with how, as a country, we treat our nursing homes. We cherish long longevity. We cherish longevity, but we don't invest in those facilities to adequately take care of the people in old, with old age and disability. Long-standing inequalities in our system are being revealed and exacerbated by this pandemic. Be assured that while we focus on rapid support to long-term care facilities through this work, we're also working on long-term system change. 
Our foundation will fund a new National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine report on nursing home safety and quality, and it'll serve as a guidepost for how we can ensure that the current crisis never happens again. Thank you all for what you're doing every day, and thank you for being here with us. We want to take all the goodwill that you are handing to us by being with us today and use it wisely. Thank you for being with us. With that, let me introduce our panelists. First, we'll hear from Dr. Sherry Ling, Acting Chief Medical Officer for the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS. Dr. Ling has served as the Deputy Chief Medical Officer since 2011 and as a medical officer since 2009. Her commitment and focus on the achievement of meaningful health outcomes for the beneficiaries and families through the delivery of high quality person-centered care across all care settings is exceptional and exemplary. Dr. Ling contributes her clinical expertise as a geriatrician and rheumatologist. Most recently, she's been supporting CMS's, CMS in the agency response to address this pandemic. Following Dr. Ling, we'll hear from Dr. Kate Armate and Dr. Alice Bonner, both from IHI. Dr. Mate is the Chief Innovation and in Education Officer at IHI and a research professor at Weill Cornell, and his scholarly work has focused on health and health system change, health care quality, and strategies for, achieve, for achieving long scale, large scale change, and approaches to improving value. Dr. Bonner is a Senior Advisor at the IHI and adjunct faculty at the Johns Hopkins School of Nursing. She's been a geriatric nurse practitioner, caring for older adults and their families for 30 years, and she served as director of the Division of Nursing Home Survey and Certification Group in the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid. She was also director of the Bureau of Healthcare Safety and Quality at the Massachusetts Department of Public Health and secretary for the Executive Office of Elder Affairs and Commonwealth of Massachusetts. What do all of us have in common? We care about what we can do to help you clinically, help you with the work in front of you, and listen, most importantly, to listen. So with that, it's my great privilege to turn to our first speaker, Dr. Sherry Ling. Sherry? Hi, good, good day, all, and, and thank you, Terry. Um, thank you to all of you, each of you, for joining today. Um, I give you my personal gratitude for all that you are doing to really um, serve and care for and keep safe our beneficiaries. Um, and I really want to thank you also on behalf of my colleagues at CMS for the, the true dedication and commitment to provide the best possible care uh, to our nursing home residents. Um, and as, as Terry alluded to, what we are facing really is, is unprecedented as far as scope, scale, and, and impact as far as a, a challenge to our system. Um, and I think it's fair to say that um, it will take each of us, all of us together um, from the federal perspective, state contributions, um, and also um, local leadership and dedication um, to, to win this battle and together I truly believe that we can win this battle on the on behalf of the people who we serve our, our beneficiaries. Um, I want to also echo a special note of thanks to those of you at the front lines. Um, many, many thanks. Um, I, I have already received questions and emails <clears throat> about um, a, an announcement yesterday that of um, the uh, Coronavirus Commission for Safety and Quality in Nursing Homes um, that was announced uh, by uh, President Trump and spoken of by Administrator Seema Verma. Um, and I, I wanted to provide some context of this. And, and she mentioned this in her remarks yesterday as well. So um, as, as you all know, CMS has been building on a five-part strategy, which includes strengthening oversight and enhancing enforcement and increasing transparency, as well as improving on the quality of care and reducing administrative um, burdens so that you know, our clinicians, our healthcare teams uh, can really focus on, on the job that they need to do, which is providing the best possible care uh, for our beneficiaries. And, and really today we're focusing on our, our residents in, in nursing homes. Um, and just to remind ourselves that, you know, we, we began back in, in February 
um, and, and even earlier than that, thinking about and putting in place um, and refreshing our expectations of, of robust infection prevention practices, screening requirements, and temporary restrictions really to um, mitigate pre and prevent transmission of the coronavirus um, into nursing homes and, and within nursing homes. Um, and we soon thereafter really um, added to that by, by reprioritizing and prioritizing routine inspections to really focus on those um, that uh, were um, in situations of immediate jeopardy uh, rather than going through the, the usual pace of play, which um, we know wasn't really working with the crisis at hand. Um, we more recently, um, you know, all, uh, we have learned the importance of testing and, and the information that comes from testing. And so we recently um, prom promoted and, and announced payment increases for certain lab tests to make those more readily available, um, including in, in the nursing home setting. And, and um, finally, most recently, um, we, uh, in our in our uh, interim final rule, um, proposed and uh, introduced the notion of requiring reporting to CDC of not only events of the coronavirus or COVID nineteen, but also the impact um, uh, of uh, that disease on nursing homes, with attention to uh, personal protective equipment um, and and test availability at the at the point of care which is in our nursing homes um, so you know that provides a really fundamental and an important vehicle of information collection and information that then would be shared um, with uh, with with family members with also the uh, state reporting systems the CDC and also with CMS and this is this too is unprecedented and will bring data and information, make that available um, in, in many ways that then is ready for action. Um, I will say that um, the convening of the independent commission that was announced yesterday um, really represents the next step in ensuring quality and safety and builds on all that I've mentioned thus far. Um, it, this really, this commission will be um, focusing on three things, which is putting residents first, um, thinking and advising on how best to improve outcomes for the beneficiaries um, in the context of uh, this pandemic and public health emergency, but really we view this as as um, recommendations um, and best practices that can sustain us longer than than the immediate emergency. So it really sets the stage. Um, we also uh, will um, expect that the, the commission will um, strengthen efforts to enable rapid and effective identification and mit mitigation of, of the virus um, and prepare us for um, any possible um, resurgence of this virus or you know, when we are going towards the fall if it, with the next uh, wave of, of flu. Um, and, and the third is that, you know, we want to enhance the strategies to improve compliance with infection control policies and practices that we know actually work. So those three things, we will um, expect that the commission will take a very data <clears throat> focused um, uh, effort that includes reviewing the, the forthcoming data on COVID events, but um, other data that goes beyond that event reporting, uh, taking a, a broad view of uh, how can we glean information from the health system that it can inform how we, how we would then, as a system, uh, move forward to, to the betterment of the outcomes for those who we serve. Um, and I, I want to thank you all who have already sent me emails um, for your interest um, in, in serving on this really important commission. And we're really excited that we are already receiving um, notes of interest. Um, a CMS contractor will be responsible for the nomination and selection process. 
Um, and the, the, the goal there would be that the, the panel wants, will be representative of a broad stakeholder or group um, and um, will be balanced but still focused on, uh, on, on the prize here, which is the betterment of outcomes of our, our American nursing home residents. Um, and that we will be making additional information available soon. And I will bring that to this group as soon as, as we have additional details to share. So with that, I just wanna thank you all again. And really it's an honor to, to be with you today. Um, and I'll, I'll turn it back to you. So thank you. Thank you, Sherry. And uh, Dr. Mate is going to continue the program. Thank you, uh, Terry and, and Sherry, for uh, getting us started here. I, I want to uh, just to start off with uh, some words of thanks again um, as the slides come up. Um, so my uh, the first thing I really want to say is, uh, uh, like Terry and Sherry, uh, I, 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 I want to express my gratitude to all of you who are in the field working on improving care for, for residents of nursing homes and, and nursing facilities around the country and indeed some of you around the world. This, is, this pandemic has obviously affected all of us in different ways, but it's affected uh, you uh, most of all. And we appreciate all the work that you are doing to keep your residents safe, healthy, and their families informed and healthy as well, as well as your staff and personnel. So thank you for the work that you're doing and thank you for joining us today. Um, the second thing I wanna say is a, a big thank you to uh, Terry uh, and the John A. Hartford Foundation and to Sherry and CMS um, and to a number of partners who have been helping us to, to design and develop and imagine what a rapid response network would, might look like for nursing homes. And so we've been joined by a number of you on calls that are, have been part of the planning and imagination process for this. Uh, and I wanna welcome all of you, all 700 plus of you and many more that will come uh, that will uh, help us to design what we hope will be an effective strategy for helping all of us to improve care um, and get better outcomes for individuals living in nursing facilities. So uh, we, we thank those that have already started to give us input and we welcome all of you in this conversation today um, and in conversations to come in the future to help us design uh, what we hope will be a resource of lasting value and lasting national impact. So please, to get us started, I would say somewhere in this, uh, uh, we're all becoming very familiar now with all these different platforms, but somewhere in this platform is a Q&A or chat function use it now and throughout this uh, webinar and beyond it to help uh, advise us about what you're hearing, tell us your ideas about uh, what you're hearing about and your reflections on what you're hearing about so that we can better design this and adapt the design so it's fit for purpose to serve you best, which is our ultimate ambition. Um, if you go to the next slide, I just wanna share with you a little bit of background on what we're, what we're building here. So uh, as all of you will know, and, and many of you will know uh, very, very well, and, and you'll know um, in many ways uh, uh, intimately, we face a challenge in nursing facilities and skilled nursing and rehab facilities. Uh, we have uh, many older adults uh, that are uh, in, living in these facilities, uh, residents of these facilities that are dying at disproportionately high rates. Uh, we have a challenge around adequate staffing. We've heard this loud and clear um, from all of you and from members who have helped us in the design of this work so far many challenges around adequate staff to care for these very ill uh, residents. Um, staff themselves are out sick. Um, many of them are afraid of getting ill themselves and lack sort of appropriate uh, uh, protective equipment, which is the third element of the problem. So we know that many uh, SNFs and uh, nursing facilities lack some of this uh, the, uh, personal protective equipment to care for residents and protect their staff. And then lastly, I think we're seeing in the media, um, the press, uh, a narrative taking shape around what's happening uh, in nursing homes today. And uh, many of you have seen uh, these headlines and been affected by them directly in your work. And uh, largely there's this, there's, uh, you know, at IHI we talk about, you know, name, shame, and blame. And there is a bit of that in the narrative uh, right now uh, around uh, naming and shaming and, and blaming, frankly, uh, nursing homes and, and, and the staff of those nursing homes and nursing facilities. Uh, we believe there's a need to refocus that narrative, refocus that storyline um, on the opportunity in front of us to strengthen, support, and improve uh, nursing homes and nursing facilities going forward. On the next slide is part of how we imagine uh, the solution. And again, this is uh, what I would describe as first draft, open for your comments and your feedback and your questions. Uh, the first element is a national nursing home huddle. 
Um, starting on Monday, as Terry announced at the top of the call, on Monday, May 4th at noon Eastern, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time, uh, and th there will be a national nursing home huddle. We invite all of you and all of your members and stakeholders to participate in this nursing home huddle. Um, in, in just a minute, uh, my colleague Alice Bonner will share more details about how that huddle will be structured, but this will be a 20-minute, uh, no-nonsense stand-up huddle uh, focused on the latest data, what we are hearing out of Washington and relevant state uh, agencies, and then at least one uh, better or best practice that we have discovered somewhere in the nursing home community that we want to make sure you are all aware of and can help implement in your, in your environment. That's the nursing home huddle. The second element is we know that there are many issues that don't yet have a better practice, that don't yet have an easy to find, readily available, easy to implement solution. And we know that for those, uh, for those questions, those concerns, some of which are the biggest concerns that are facing us today, we need to quickly constitute expert-led working groups that can help us move towards a better solution uh, today. These will not be months long processes. These will be weeks long or perhaps even days long processes that uh, we commission a small group of experts and leaders like yourselves to come work together and find the elements of a solution that are pressing uh, us today and need a solution now. Uh, we'll focus both the National uh, Nursing Home Huddle and the working groups on very practical guidance to, to, that can be implemented in, in real time in nursing homes now. This is not about planning for two years hence, it's about what can we do today to try to improve care for our, our residents and protect our staff and, and make sure we uh, improve the health of our communities. Uh, <clears throat> number three is uh, media kits. Um, so part of this notion of changing the narrative is about authentically helping to describe to our local media and national media uh, what is actually happening inside of nursing homes to change the this, this story. We're not we're not sitting idly by to await you know, the next calamity. We're actually facing off against this one and future uh, such challenges with very proactive um, and uh, active work to try to, uh, to change the, the, the trajectory of COVID-19, helping us prepare uh, storylines, uh, whether it be for social media or uh, traditional media, uh, preparing those media kits so that we can start to affect the narrative is going to be a big part of how we, how we ch start changing the storyline here. And then lastly, as things emerge from the National Nursing Home Huddle, from our working groups, and from our communications with our local communities, we will identify ide ideas that uh, Sherry and colleagues at CMS and other policymakers and legislators and regulators will need to take account of. And so we'll be taking some of those observations from the initiative and working with many of you who are, have a long history and track record of interfacing uh, with uh, federal agencies and state agencies to help, change, you know, to help bring about the changes that we need to policy and regulation going forward. So many of you have considerably greater expertise in those areas already. Um, and what we will be doing is feeding some of the information forward from the nursing room huddles and from the community that we'll be working with and gathering to help advise on some of the messaging and directions that we might travel to towards. So with that, I'm gonna now turn to my colleague, Alice Bonner. Um, Alice, uh, Terry introduced earlier, but Alice has been helping us to designed the initiative and has been, uh, with her experience in nursing homes, has really been intimately connected to how this type of solution might help us uh, with what kinds of benefits we're hoping to see. Alice, take it from here. Great, thanks, Kedar. And uh, welcome everyone, we're just delighted to be here. Um, so I started out in nursing homes when I was 19. I was in college and I ran out of money and got a job as a nursing assistant. So I'm 63 now and still doing this work and it is just more meaningful every day. And I know many of you share decades of experience. So we are glad you're here and we are doing this with you uh, and we need you very much as part of this initiative. So uh, just to expand a little bit on what uh, Dr. Mate was talking about. So this slide shows you the expected benefits to nursing homes. And when our team says nursing homes, we mean nursing home residents first and foremost. We mean nursing home workers, healthcare workers. We mean families and care partners and we mean community Communities. And I know that resonates with a lot of people on this call. We cannot have age-friendly communities without an age-friendly health system, and we'll talk more about that. But a, a big part of this work is this pandemic, this crisis has kind of helped us to really get back to, well, what is the right framework here? What's the right structure? And I think for a lot of us working through age-friendly health systems 
can be a part of it. So there's three items on here to reinforce what, what Dr. Mate was just saying. So we've got better practices, we've got communications and collective voice. So in these huddles, when we talk about better or best practices, we are talking about things that are practical, that can be applied and scaled in multiple settings, and we're talking about building kind of a peer-to-peer -peer network so that, you know, one organization that has a best practice can share it on one of these huddles and somebody else halfway across the country will say, wow, I wonder if we could do that here. I want to reach out to that person. So building capacity through peer-to-peer -peer networking. For communications, again, with the local newspaper, I live in Massachusetts, I read the Boston Globe, you might read the New York Times or the Post, and there are a lot of these, these articles that just don't come across as saying what we want them to say, which is we want there to be balance in the reporting. We want people to talk about improvement. We want them to talk about the great quality initiatives that we all know are going on. So these um, media ready kits will hopefully help anyone who might right now be a little hesitant about reaching out to a local reporter or a local media outlet. We want people to get confidence and feel ready to have those conversations, whether it's with Congress or whomever we're talking to. So we're hoping these media kits will help. And, you know, Kader talked about the collective voice. When we all get completely overwhelmed, what happens is typically hospitals go back and talk to hospitals and nursing homes go back and talk to nursing homes. And we lose this ability to come together as a true community, and that means the municipal community and the health system community, and have one voice, a strong voice, um, so that we can articulate what we need, why we need it, how much it's gonna cost, and why we need to do it right now. So those are all things we wanna do in our, in our huddles and bring forward. Next slide. So this is a picture and it shows you what we're gonna be doing on these huddles as, as Dr. Mate talked about. So there'll be a brief welcome, this data minute to update with data that we think will be of interest to nursing homes uh, and uh, nursing home staff, a policy update for two minutes. So we heard Dr. Ling talk a little bit about the announcements yesterday, so things like that. And then this best practice section, which will just be five to eight minutes, but will really focus on actionable solutions. We've all talked for a long, long time about a lot of the issues right now with COVID-19. What we wanna do is focus on solutions and be oriented toward moving forward. And then some Q&A and then a quick wrap up. And we are trying to make this usable so that we're gonna come to you if you are a nursing home, nursing community. So, you know, we're gonna come by telephone or by WebEx if you wanna see the slides. And we're gonna do our best to record these sessions so people can go back and it'll be archived and available to see. Again, focused on very practical solutions, things that can be done in your setting. We're gonna start on time, we're gonna end on time, we're gonna set a good example here, and we wanna continuously improve the process using the feedback from the nursing home community. Next slide. So here, I hope that the picture on the left-hand side of this slide is familiar to at least uh, many of you. It's the 4M framework, the age-friendly health system framework. And there's over 600 teams around the country now that are working to become age-friendly, including quite a few post-acute and long-term care organizations. This slide is also showing you on the right, the list of topics for better practices. And uh, this, uh, again, these are sent to us from nursing homes all over the country. And we want to get really specific. We want these to be things that nursing homes really want to hear about. And we've already had so many questions come in to this group that we, we are pretty sure, especially since a thousand people signed up for this webinar, we're pretty sure that there is a level of interest here. If you look at the third from the bottom here that talks about infection prevention and control procedures, and you map it back to the four M's, well, mobility is one of the four M's and it's, it's critically important. If people are socially isolated and they're not doing as much with activities and exercise and their usual you know, uh, things that they do with their, their colleagues and friends in the nursing home, then their mobility is impacted. Their functional ability can be impacted and people are less able to get around and walk safely and maybe there's more falls. So all of these things are wrapped up together. The second from the bottom here talks about telehealth to avoid social isolation and loneliness. And there's other ways that we need to think about older residents in 
nursing homes and how to help prevent loneliness and social isolation. Um, Dr. Fulmer and I were on a webinar for the National Academy of Medicine a couple of weeks ago, and a geriatrician from Maryland said, as part of their effort to do this, they had a string trio play a concert in the garden, in the courtyard, and the, the residents of the nursing home opened their windows a little bit so they could hear the music, and it made a huge difference. And people on the phone said, wow, I wonder if we could do that here. So it seems so simple, but we want to share those experiences. Next slide. So in addition to best practices, we all know that there's also better practices, meaning practices that we might not have as much evidence as we would like, but they, we know that they're important and people are doing them effectively around the country. So these are just three examples here. So you know the kinds of things that nursing homes are gonna hear about on these, uh, on these huddles. So the first one is there's a team of people, nurses and doctors and people from a medical school, nursing school, who go into nursing homes to provide support and guidance. For example, a checklist on PPE to help you know what you need to go into a particular residence room to care for them. So that's one specific example of a program that's up and running that we're going to showcase in one of these huddles. Secondly, you know, working with states and federal agencies. So in one of the states, there's a program where nursing homes submit data every day to the state about how much PPE they have and how much they need, you know, the burn rate and all of that that you are familiar with. So that's another example of programs around the country that are going to be showcased, including state programs. And finally, aligning efforts within a state. So another example of a state program, again, here in Massachusetts, where a number of us live and practice, um, the state of Massachusetts has done a number of specific things. So they have a web portal with people looking for work and nursing homes who are seeking workers and trying to match them up together. Um, that's just started a little bit recently, but it's been pretty effective. We also have a nursing home family resource hotline. It's not a hotline, it's a resource line seven days a week. And people call that line and volunteers answer and answer questions that they have about what's happening in different nursing homes. We also have the Department of Health that has a weekly call. So as opposed to that daily resource line, once a week, the Department of Health gets on the phone with any nursing homes that wanna join them and there's like half an hour of Q&A. So it's a really good and active exchange. Uh, and uh, those are the kinds of things. We also have some teams as of last week going into nursing homes on behalf of the state to try to, again, provide support. So all of that work is going to be showcased in these huddles. And I just want to reiterate how important it is for you to send information to us so that we can integrate the goals that you have and what you think are the top priority areas, because we all know other organizations around the country are doing many programs like this, and we want to make sure this is something of added value for you and your members. So with that, you can go to the next slide, and Dr. Mate, we'll turn it back to you. Yeah, thanks, Alice. Uh, and uh, so just building on this, and uh, we want to share share with you kind of, uh, so building on the notion of better practices and what we'll showcase in the, in the call series, at the end of all or most of them, we'll try to identify the kinds of tools and uh, protocols and takeaways, workflows, videos, assessments, one pagers, the kinds of things that will help you and help your nursing home uh, participants and nursing homes themselves uh, to actually implement whatever that better practice is. And the idea here is, is that it's one thing to hear about these things in a, in a huddle or in a, in a webinar like this. It's another thing to have a tangible uh, tool of some kind that you can download, customize, make fit for purpose in your environment, and then use or leverage in your environment. Next, next slide, please. So we've talked a little bit about this idea of communications and how we will work on uh, working on the story as we get into this work and authentically trying to change the plot line that exists in the national media. Uh, so there's three ways in which we expect to help contribute and help support you to help uh, uh, change that storyline and improve the, the public uh, perception. Uh, one is uh, there'll be a website available with all of the recordings of these uh, huddles and with any of those resources that I just described a moment ago. Those will get posted there uh, for you to use and download and, and, and tell us more about at any time. Um, second is that we'll, we'll, uh, for anyone that has joined one of the huddles, we'll ensure that you have available to you 
uh, and to all of your member or members, uh, uh, the, a list of those key resources that we're developing, that we're finding, and that what some of the working groups that I described earlier are in fact creating, and we'll make those available to all of you as well. And then lastly, I described earlier this idea of, uh, a, of a communications uh, media kit. Uh, we'll produce those uh, roughly on a monthly basis. And the idea here is to, uh, it, the, the traditional kind of media kit will have some kind of uh, basically a, a, a templated material that you can use for local uh, newspapers, for uh, your website, for emails that you might send out to your members or to colleagues or to people that are in your networks, um, social media posts, et cetera. So we'll, the IHI team uh, working with some of you will prepare those every month to help uh, elaborate how participating in this, in this network is helping you to change practice and achieve better results and outcomes for your, for your beneficiaries. Uh, next slide. And then the last thing we want to talk about before making our invitation to you is the idea of collective voice and advocacy. So uh, already many advocacy and uh, support organizations have been working together with us and helping to develop the set of ideas that you're hearing about today. Uh, we'll continue that collaboration and as we prepare messages and coordinate those messages with one another, uh, we can then speak with one voice um, and a powerful voice, we think, to uh, lawmakers, to regulators, policymakers, and important organizations that affect all of us uh, on a regular basis. We'll also be in ensuring that we're creating the kind of connectivity we need with leading policy makers and, and advocates to help uh, advocate for more for what we need um, in, in nursing homes, nursing, nursing facilities around the country. And then uh, lastly, we'll be taking a lot of the information to, to, uh, to funnel to those, uh, to those recipients, policymakers, and leaders uh, from what we hear from all of you in the community. In the National Nursing Home uh, uh, Daily Huddle, we'll be taking some of the voices that we're hearing from the field about the better practices and what would support the massive spread of those better practices. And we'll be bringing those, uh, those ideas forward uh, so that we can all collectively advocate together. So with that, uh, we're gonna, next slide, please. So we wanna just once again say thank you to uh, the Johnny Hartford Foundation and to a number of the organizations listed here on this slide, AHCA, AMDA, CDC, CMS, Leading Age, uh, the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine, and Trust for America's Health, as well as a group of advisors uh, whose names you'll see here on the slide. Uh, these folks and these organizations have already helped us to design and support uh, the initiative that we're describing to you today. Uh, we'll, and we will welcome all of you, uh, all of you who are on the line today uh, into this dialogue. Uh, teach us and tell us how we can improve the design that we just gave you, uh, which has come together very, very quickly over the last few weeks, uh, but has come together very, very quickly. And we're, we're uh, uh, all ears essentially to all of you and welcoming of your ideas and, and, and thoughts about how we can best serve you so that you can best serve those that you care for on a daily basis. Um, and the last slide here is our ask of you. Um, and so we hope that you will join us. Uh, uh, you will join us on Monday morning uh, or Monday at midday, noon Eastern and 9 a.m. Pacific time uh, for the first of these national nursing home huddles, uh, these 20 minute meetings that we described earlier in which we'll cover uh, latest data, latest policy and a best practice. Uh, our focus for next week will be focused on PPE um, and so we'll be talking a lot about best practices around PPE, around acquiring it, around using it, around how we might work with our state agencies around it. Uh, so we'll be talking all week long about PPE, and then we'll be working on testing and screening, and then we'll be working on uh, how to uh, support our staff uh, and help staffing issues going forward. So we'll be talking about these topics in series as the, the days evolve. Again, we encourage all of you to give us your thoughts on the places to focus our energies and focus uh, attention. But please join us on Monday, May 4th, uh, 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, we'll send out right after this email an, an invitation to join us uh, for that huddle. And if you're an association, a community group, or an advocacy group, please share that announcement with all of the people that you work with and your members. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to, to Jennifer. Um, uh, Jennifer Lenoci Edwards is the regional lead for North America here uh, at IHI. Uh, Jennifer has been uh, helping us with the design that we've been working on here and presenting to you today and has also been uh, today uh, uh, looking at the chat and the questions that have come in so far. So Jennifer, uh, over to you. Great. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, pleasure to be here. So uh, and many of you have found the chat function already, but for those of you that have not, to ask a question, please 
click on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, type in the question and you'll join the queue. We're not gonna be able to answer all the questions that are flooding in, but we're gonna to try to capture and respond to them um, around the rapid response network um, that uh, our team has been sharing with you today. So um, I've got a question already. I've got a handful of questions. I'm gonna point this one specifically to you, Alice. So we're getting lots and lots of questions here in the chat about how we're ensuring that our rapid response network is gonna have a multidisciplinary view of the world of care for elders, meaning assisted living facilities. Many folks on this call are representing assisted living facilities, representing um, CNAs, uh, geriatricians, and um, SNF medical directors. So how are we going to um, use the rapid um, network to ensure that we have that multi multidisciplinary view? Great question. Uh, wonderful question. So, you know, the way that we would go about this, and we've talked about this on the team, so I, I suspect people on the team are smiling because we've had these conversations. Um, we want to reach out to, in particular, skilled nursing facilities and nursing facilities that may not be connected yet or may not be well enough connected, they're not getting the information that they want and need. And so maybe they're not in a professional association. Maybe they don't have a corporate structure where they have people they can go to for answers. And we want to find those organizations. Many of them are in low income communities, inner cities, very rural areas that are low income. And we need to find every every nursing home that we can that has needs and we need to try to meet those needs. When we start these huddles, we are specifically reaching out and we would encourage anyone on the phone call today here with this group to let us know if they have a best practice, a better practice, if they have anything that they want to share with peers around the country. But we're specifically trying to get people from nursing, social work, pharmacy, nutrition, you know, medical directors, CNAs, absolutely people across the spectrum who are part of a team. Every single person on the team is valued and everybody, everybody's voice has to be heard. And this is one of the reasons why we keep saying collective voice is because if we all come together and we don't just have, you know, medical directors saying one thing and nurses saying another and social work saying another, it's not going to work that way. We, we have proven that. So let's get people together. Let's get an interprofessional team and help us do that. Give us suggestions. Tell us who we should be talking to because we really want to make sure that we're doing what that um, person who wrote that question suggested. So thank you for that. Go ahead, Jennifer. Great. There's lots of people asking that question. So it's a good one. Um, Sherry, to you, um, you mentioned the great news um, from CMS about the commission. And lots of folks are asking how you're going to be paying attention to the rapid response network, um, you know, as part of the work um, that CMS is leading with the commission. So how can this group be a, be a support to that commission? Sure. So um, just to, to, to distinguish this, I think the, the, the purposes, um, certainly we have common goals uh, between both you know, what is, uh, what the commission will be addressing and also what this group addresses. I think of this as very complementary though. Um, and, you know, I, I really appreciate, you know, the points of the interdisciplinary uh, perspectives that need to be represented for this group. Um, similarly, I think that is the, the, um, the desire for the composition of, of the commission, um, just looking at the questions and answers coming in. I mean, several, you know, one of the things we have to ask for this, this group is who is not here that needs to be here. Um, and, you know, I've seen a couple of, of, of questions, um, you know, ombudsman and uh, it, it, people who may not have, you know, been in the initial outreach. But I, I think this is one where we really need all perspectives who touch upon the lives of our, our nursing home residents. Um, and I, I, we also um, received a, a question about, um, you know, how is this different? How, how would the commission be, and, and just to, to focus on the, the, the word independent, the commission will not, um, 
we have surveyor functions. It's our responsibility, obligation. It is the authority um, that, you know, CMS has the federal presence, but also there's a state function that's really critical to this. Um, I want to say, though, that the commission can look broadly at the data, the information, what the signals are for better practices um, that can also inform, you know, how, um, how we work, how CMS functions. Um, so it's not just that we are just going to uh, be, be looking at nursing homes, but also our processes and how we work. Um, so I think that's why it is critically important that the commission be an independent um, body. And so it, it will be the, the information for the commission will be forthcoming, but it will be um, uh, enriched, populated, um, and uh, conducted by a independent body, independent of of, so not, you know, not us, but um, a contractor will be doing it. So hopefully that answers some of the questions that um, uh, will, you know, distinguish that work, the complementary work here, but the common threads of this is, we need everyone who um, can think through this and we will have to learn our way through this together. So we are in, in this all together. So appreciate the question. So thank you. Great, Sherry. Yes, and we are we are testing in real time um, and trying to get some results here. So um, back to you, Alice, real quick. Um, there was a comment in the chat about um, uh, just assisted living again. So again, lots of representation on the call from assisted living. Um, can you just um, reemphasize the desire to have assisted living um, as part of this community? Um, and maybe um, add a little bit more to that? <laughs> sure. So, you know, we have, uh, we have so many different names and they mean different things in different parts of our country. But, you know, we have assisted living. We have skilled nursing facilities and nursing facilities, which is the primary focus initially of this, of this new, you know, program. We eventually would like to bring in more assisted living, but the complexity is that nursing homes have federal regulations and assisted living is regulated by each of the states with very different regulations in those different states. So it just means we have to have a different mindset and we may need to have additional leadership to be sure that we are covering assisted living really well. In a lot of states right now, Massachusetts being one of them and many people on the phone could probably you know, agree for their state. Um, it's so it's so overwhelming right now that everybody's gone in together. So that's why you're seeing assisted living, nursing homes, SNF, PACE programs, CCRCs, continuing care retirement communities that have multiple levels. So I think it's a great question. And I think we're going to need input from this group about how we can make sure assisted living's voice is being heard. The people who live there you know, that their voices are being heard and family members or care partners, um, because it's a very, very important piece of this. It may not be the first thing we do, but it definitely is in our minds as a part of this initiative. So thank you, Jennifer. Thanks, Alice. Um, KR, to you, as kind of um, part of the, the brainchild of this uh, idea, um, people are asking some uh, operational questions. Will this huddle go on forever? Um, you know, how, how are we going to be iterating important a piece of information we should share with this crew that their, their feedback is going to be essential to the success of this work group. So maybe you can speak to that a little bit. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jennifer. And thanks for the question. Yeah, I, it, as Jennifer is noting here, the design is going to be modified. We're, we're starting with a tentative design, what you saw us present just a few minutes ago, but we are, you know, this is a sort of almost axiomatic at IHI, it's the way we do our work. It's, we're constantly iterating and changing and uh, uh, always trying to build so that we make the, the thing, in this case, the nursing home huddle, which is what it's called right now, in, fit for purpose. So we might, if we decide to focus uh, more broadly on a wider set of community actors, we might change the name. We might change the, uh, uh, the right now, our, our plan is to continue this at, at a minimum for six months. We might go beyond that. Depends on the, the, the nature of the situation. I, I'm all sure. I believe that we will, uh, right now there's an acute challenge that we're, we're all focused on and, and, and working on, um, but we know that the, the acute challenge 
is really uh, only helping to uh, show us some of the things that need to be improved upon in the macro sense. And so while we will address the needs acutely because that's where there's enormous pain and suffering right now, we also know that we are gonna take the lessons from this to try to roll forward to some of the bigger issues that need to be addressed in order for us to strengthen and support the community uh, that's, that's working on these issues. And those problems are not, uh, are not two week problems, they're not six month problems, they're, 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 they go years into the future. And so our, the, as of today, our, our thinking is to, to build uh, the network that we've described, the huddle structure that we described, and to iterate that design uh, with your help and your support and your better ideas uh, over the months to come, but it will last at least for the next for the foreseeable future in the next several months. Great, thank you, Kadar. And I will say that we we did receive many questions in here around very specific uh, tactical, operational, and clinical areas that relate to COVID nineteen. Those will go kind of into that idea list that Alice shared with you earlier. Um, and so we will not be answering those questions for you all today, but they will be prioritized and embedded into our daily huddles. Um, Alice, to you, um, there's a couple of folks on here who are representing QIOs, and we know that they're incredibly uh, powerful um, improvement levers out in, the, um, in different parts of the country. How might we engage with QIOs in, the, in their networks, their nursing home and assisted living networks that they are supporting? Anything? That's a great question. Thank you. And we have a number of QIOs who are, we have a sort of a master list of groups we want to make sure that we have in the, uh, within the folks who are submitting ideas and having conversations with us. QIOs are right there. So we've connected with a few. We want to connect with all of them eventually. And if anybody on this call is from one of the QIO QINs and is interested in connecting with us, please email us because we would, we will absolutely reach out to you, um, you know, to work with the QIO, QIN network on, you know, improvement around COVID-19. There's so many areas to address and they have so much expertise. So yes, we absolutely want to do that. And thank you for, it's a great question. Great. There is an email that was just, that will be uh, placed into the chat and you will receive that email as well as getting get a couple of questions around that. And one question about the VA involvement. Um, Alice, have you been in touch with the VA about um, the Rapid Response Network? So um, we have, and I don't know, Kadar may want to jump in here if he's had more uh more recent uh, conversation than I have. I think, you know, we reached out to the national group. We've talked to some local groups. Um, you know, the VA is structured even differently than <laughs> either assisted living or skilled nursing, nursing facility. They, they do have separate um, sort of regulatory piece, but they have quality work that's very similar to a lot of what um, all of uh, us do. And if there's anybody on the phone call right now who's thinking, wow, boy, we could really use this in the VA. I'd love to do something. We absolutely would want to connect you. Kadar, do you, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I think you covered, you know, kind of the outreach to VA. We're definitely, we've been in contact with VA. Uh, we will remain in contact we, with VA. We will continue to embrace uh, uh, the, you know, this is a wide tent. I think that there's a, there's a lot of comments in the questions. We can see it that, you know, yes, we, we you know, we want to uh, invite anyone really who has a, a, an organizational subtype that falls in roughly into this category um, that might benefit from learning uh, together in the in the format that we're describing. Um, and so, it, you know, send your emails to uh, nhrapidresponse, nhrapidresponse at ihi.org. You'll see it in the chat. Um, send us an email about, if you have an idea about a group we should be in, uh, talking to, inviting in, uh, please send it to us. We're, we're all ears and happy to invite uh, whoever, uh, you know, you see as uh, needing the kind of thing that we're describing here. That is absolutely our goal. So thank you. Great. Kate, our last question um, is a really important one. So um, COVID-19 has really brought forward the massive health inequities that we're seeing in health and health care. And so can you just briefly speak to this being a priority area for this network? Right. Yeah, absolutely. So I think all um, you know, so much of what we're seeing and experiencing again is, is uh, COVID is really digging in, um, uh, exposing the inequities in our systems and how they have been uh, have been designed and how they've been treating for so long. Uh, we've seen differential outcomes uh, in uh, race, class, gender, you know, all kinds of things that are being exposed by the by the disease itself and the disease process. 
And I think we are we are uh, committed in this in this series in the in the huddles that we will uh, we will conduct to minding this question and and focusing our attention on how to not only improve overall performance and improve overall outcomes, but specifically to remediate the inequities that we're seeing uh, in the landscape today. So I think that is absolutely uh, front and center uh, in the design itself of what we're what we're planning to tackle. Um, and you'll uh, hopefully see that thread as we start to work through some of the better practices that they'll be aimed at trying to close gaps uh, in the inequities that we're seeing in, in, in care. So thank you again for that question. Great, and that was the last uh, minute we had for questions, so I'm passing this ball along, and thank you so much for those of you that submitted questions. Thank you, Jennifer. That was, that was great work, and I want to thank all the speakers. Uh, every time we have this conversation, we get clearer on what we might do to help our public on the phone today, and what I would say is that I want to thank the audience and say that what you're doing every day is is crucial and we thank you for keeping residents safe and we want to do it all we can to to help with practice help with morale and and be useful we know there's a lot of competing uh, webinars going on right now i listened to an excellent webinar yesterday by leading age uh, we will make sure that we're not duplicating but instead that we are filling in spaces and we're feeling a clinical space here that we think we can be very useful uh, in helping with best practice as is the ihi uh, incredible skill. So if you're an association or a community group or advocate, we invite you to tell your community to join us Monday. With your input, you'll tell us how to improve what we're missing, what you need. And if you work in a skilled nursing facility or nursing home, join us on Monday for that huddle. If you can't join us Monday, join us Tuesday. Um, and uh, we're, you'll always be welcome. We hope we get nursing assistance. We hope we get uh, physical therapy assistance. Anybody who wants to listen, anybody can join. And we will begin to figure out the best way to capture your energy for the good. And this afternoon, you'll receive an email with more information on how to register. Together, we can support our nursing homes, the residents and the staff, and we're just grateful you joined us today. Thank you, and this closes our webinar. Have a good day.